Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to talk to you guys about January movies. Now, typically, January is known as a shitty month of the year to release movies. But there are actually a couple of interesting discoveries that I made while I was ranking all of the January movies that I've ever seen. Uh, I used the website called Movie Phone, but instead of PH Phone, it's an F. So Movie Phone. And I used that to look at every single January in film history and then figure out all the January movies that I've seen. Now, it it might be that some of these movies aren't January movies. I really hope that they aren't because I trusted the website and, you know, I, I really hope that it's accurate. So, but there's two things that I discovered. Number one, there are a lot of directors' first movies that came out in January. Like, for, for all time, film history... So I found uh, The Lodger, Alfred Hitchcock. That was the first movie that he ever directed. Uh, That was a January movie. Wes Anderson, Bottle Rocket. That was a January movie. So I really think that January, after looking at all these movies, there really aren't as many bad ones as you'd think. In fact, a lot of the bad ones are just a bunch of these crappy movies that nobody even knows about. Like, you know, movies that, you know, I mean, they're just products that they put out and it's like trash. You know, it's like the, it's like the cinematic equivalent of trash uh, for real. And, you know, like nobody looks at it. Nobody cares about it. They just throw it away. You know, like no one's watching that one random movie that has two stars out of 10 on IMDb uh, from January. You know, people are watching the bigger movies. They're watching the independent movies that are good. Uh, They're watching movies that are worth the time. Another discovery that I made was that January movies from the 30s to the 50s, through the 50s, were really, really good. And even through the 60s, it was the 70s. When they got bad, and I didn't see hardly any in the 70s, and then, but in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, the January movies were very, very good as well. It was only in the 2010s when January movies, for the most part, started dipping down. In fact, I already see one error. Black Panther, they put as a January movie. Didn't that come out on... uh, Martin Luther King Day or whatever to, you know, capitalize on that. So I'm taking that off the list. So sorry about that. See, there's no way. I'm not going to go through every single one of these hundred plus movies and verify them, you know. So I apologize if there are any inaccurate movies here. But I wanted to do a top ten worst and best videos. I mean, not videos, movies that came out in January of all time. So, there are a couple of bad movies I want to talk about specifically because they're that bad. You know, they're not in the top ten worst, but they damn well should be. And one of those movies is The Green Hornet. Seth Rogen is The Green Hornet. Uh... This movie was one of the most disappointing movies of all time. Not just because of my past life, but also because Seth Rogen sucks. He just sucks in everything. He sucks the life out of fucking everything. He ruined this movie. He ruined the chances for all of these pulp hero stories to be made into movies nowadays. Another thing is, like, I remember how excited I was the first time that I saw the advertisements for this movie, the first time that I saw the car, you know, the new Green uh, Hornet car, and how cool it looked, and how, you know, it was like, oh, they're going to make a really good movie. And then I saw it, 
and I was like, wow, this movie is just one of the biggest pieces of shit I've ever seen. And it largely has to do with Seth Rogen. It largely has to do with the terrible script. The only thing that I'll say is that the guy who did Cato, he did a pretty good job. I actually thought he was very good. He fit the role perfectly. It was Seth Rogen and the script, the script writer who didn't fit perfectly. They fucked up Green Hornet. And now it's however many years later, and have we gotten any Green Hornet thing? No, of course not. Isn't that nice? Another one is Killjoy 2. Killjoy 2 Deliverance is a terrible, terrible sequel to the first movie. It takes the first movie, which I thought the first movie was pretty good for a low-budget horror movie. I liked the revenge element. I liked how it actually took a lot more to defeat Killjoy than it took the adults to defeat Pennywise in It Chapter 2. But then they went to the sequel, and they turned the series into a comedy horror series. And I really don't appreciate that. You know, the acting is terrible. The actors are terrible. Like, usually in full moon movies, there's some good eye candy. There's not good eye candy in this movie. In fact, there's this really retarded part where this girl is in this, is in this uh, stall. Or, I mean, an outhouse, actually. Sorry. She's in an outhouse, and Killjoy, like, eats her you-know-what to death, and it's like, just, what the F is going on here? And on in, to add insult on top of injury, the way that they defeat Killjoy is they grab a random bottle sitting on a table right behind them, and they throw it at Killjoy. And it just happens to be the bottle of liquid that defeats Killjoy. Like, isn't that the laziest thing you've ever heard? Like, like just, oh, all the bottles, they grab the right one, and just the right one just so happened to be there. Like, wow, that's that's so easy. It's so stupid. Also, The Incredible Mr. Limpet. I know that some people probably like this movie, but I really don't. It's a very depressing movie. You know, I, I really don't like the fact that Don Knotts, instead of continuing to be in the Andy Griffith show in the best role that he ever had, uh, he chose to do a bunch of shitty movies that were all pieces of shit for the most part. You know, like that was probably the biggest mistake of his career. And I would say it's probably one of the biggest mistakes in an actor's career in history because he was thinking about it in a positive way to where he was like, I want to do some movies. You know, I, there's too much time is spent doing the Andy Griffith show, but on the ne on the down on on the downside, the Andy Griffith show was missing Barney in the later seasons, and the legacy that he had with the Andy Griffith show was worth a lot more than any of those crappy movies that he ever could have done. You know, like. The Incredible Mr. Limpet, I, from what I remember, I was so disappointed watching this movie, but from what I remember, it was a really depressing story about this guy who's just really, really depressed, and he tries to commit suicide, and then he turns into a fish or something. It's really, really depressing It's as hell. It, it's just so, ugh, ugh. It, it just makes me upset to think about it. Now... One of the movies that I reviewed recently, in fact, two movies from 2024 are in the bottom of the list here. We're not in the top ten worst yet, but we're getting close, I promise. Just two more movies. Race for Glory, Adi vs. Lancia. This was a movie that tried to be Ford v. Ferrari, but they also falsely advertised their movie. Because the movie is nothing like Ford v. Ferrari, where you see a rivalry and you see the characters equally, both sides, you understand them. You don't get to do that. You just get this boring main character who's like Benicio Del Toro, but really boring. And, and he, he, he doesn't even talk. He just like, he just, 
he he's terrible. He's just like he makes the same dead expression the whole movie, and then uh, Daniel Bruhl. He's hardly even in the movie, even though he's advertised as like the co lead of the movie. Uh, so it's just a huge piece of shit, and uh, I I I don't regret watching it because it made for a funny review, but it's definitely one of the worst January movies I've ever seen. And then, let's see, let me calculate here. Okay, so, it's funny because the Jenna Ortega movie that I just watched yesterday, it actually pushed another Jenna Ortega movie out of the list. Well, now I'm going to talk about that movie anyway, because fuck that movie. Scream 5, a.k.a. is Dead Pit Radio calls it, uh, 5 Cream, uh, this movie is one of the worst horror movies that I've ever seen. You know, Blumhouse, the, the company that destroyed Halloween and helped destroy The Exorcist and uh, just destroys all these horror franchises for uh, money, easy money. Uh, they were like, oh, we're going to do the Scream series. And it's going to be so good. And, you know, uh, there's not going to be any leaks because it's so secretive about this this epic plot, this really intricate mystery plot and then you get to the movie and it's a really really simplistic and stupid story uh you have the main girl she's really hot and she stands for palestine uh and she she talks to billy loomis conveniently as a ghost and so basically milking nostalgia with that and it's like will she be a killer won't she be a killer and it's really not interesting because it's like just because she's related to a killer doesn't mean she's going to be a killer. Like, I don't know where that weird uh, rumor came about, but, like, it's just such a weird story of, like, okay, just because her dad was a killer doesn't mean she's going to be one. Like, that's really, really kind of sickening to uh, to say something like that about, like, family members of killers, you know, as if they're problems as well. And then... uh the villains are terrible, you know, the, the, the villains are very obvious too, like there's no actual mystery as to who's the villain or who's not. Uh, Nev Campbell comes back and she's terrible, she just starts shooting at everyone like uh, Dr. L I mean, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis did in Halloween 2018, you know, where she was, you know, running around pointing her gun at children on trick-or-treat night, you know, like that's what Nev Campbell was doing in this movie. And then also, uh, they, what they did in this movie, too, was they were trying to emulate the Halloween 2018 by killing off mostly all the male characters. Because remember, it looked like the jock was originally going to be dead. And they had to bring him back because Nev Campbell left and wouldn't do the sequel. So, at the end of the movie, they wanted it to just be Nev Campbell, uh, Melissa... Miss Palestine and uh, Jenna. They wanted to have, like, you know, a strong lady trio again, like with the Halloween series, where you have Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, and the grandson. You know, they wanted to copy that, essentially, because that's all they do at Blumhouse, is they just copy everything. You know, like with the Halloween trilogy, where they just copied everything uh, and then pretended like they're ignoring all the sequels. Well, with this series, it's not so lucky, because with this series, they're not ignoring the sequels, they're tearing them all down, because they bring in a female Randy, a lesbian female Randy, she's probably one of the worst movie characters in human history, uh, she she can't die faster, like, I really hope that, like, in, in uh, Scream 7, uh, that probably won't even happen, that she, like, dies off screen, so we don't even have to tolerate that bitch on screen again. And then also, uh, they killed off Dewey, the last, like, legacy male character. You know, they did that on purpose so that, like, now it can just be strong women. And so, like, Dewey, uh, they, they gave him the Han Solo Force Awakens treatment. Really, really bad. Just, I, I hate everything about this movie except for uh, the two main actresses who, uh, both of them are like 10 out of 10s. So, 
Speaking of 10s, number 10, since we're finally to the list, I promise this will go sort of fast because a lot of these I haven't seen more than once, if even that. Because I turned off some of them. Number 10 is Hotel for Dogs. This is a movie where, look, it didn't hurt anyone. It's not like a terrible, bad movie, but it's just, I, I can't get over the fact that I was such an idiot kid that I thought, wow, this is a really good concept for a movie. This is going to be a really good movie. You know, like, I couldn't even tell that this movie was going to be like a real kiddish movie, and it's it's just going to be like a really goofy, light kids movie. And so I, I forced Safi to go see this in theaters as a kid. And, uh... I now just whenever I see the poster, like I just I bow my head down in embarrassment because because it's just like hotel for dogs. <laughs> like why did I see that movie? <laughs> I mean, it has Emma Roberts too, and like I can't even tell like that was her as a kid as well, and so I can't believe that like as a kid I saw her in a movie. And I, I, like, I don't even realize it because it, it doesn't even really look like her. It kind of does. I don't know. Number nine is Miller's Girl. <laughs> this is a 2024 forbidden romance movie in the style of The Crush and Lolita. It's basically an origin story for a Me Too movement accuser and that is the problem is that this movie has all of the trademarks of bad modern movies the main two actors have no chemistry they never even engage in a forbidden romance the guy just jacks off to her in a shed and gives her a kiss one time and uh, this this movie's just a giant embarrassment like it's so bad they sucked all the color out of it uh, nothing really interesting happens at all. The movie doesn't even have an actual ending. It just ends in a monologue. It, it's t so terrible that, like, it, it... And on top of all that, to add insult to injury, you know, after all that controversy with Jenna Ortega smoking in public, she smokes in this movie, and it just reminds you of how she likes to smoke, and so it makes you want to throw up. And so, like, the, the movie is just like, ugh, Miller's Girl. Like, and it's such a waste of these actors, too. Like, she could have been in a good version of this movie. Martin Freeman, he could have been in a good version of this movie. But instead, they're in trash. And I will say, too, since I didn't mention it in my hour-long review that I just did to, uh, yesterday, or today, actually, uh... I will say that all the actors did a good job. It was the material that was the problem. So, you know, I, I forgot to mention that. You know, usually I do mention, like, the acting and such. Number eight is the remake of One Missed Call. Now, <laughs> this movie, <laughs> number one, what the fuck is up with that poster? Because <laughs> you look at the poster for this movie... It's an alien on the phone in the middle of a black abyss. Like, who is this alien? And why are they calling someone? Like, there's no alien in this movie. It's a really, actually, great poster, but it doesn't make sense at all in regards to the movie. And this is also one of those movies that showed the entire plot in the trailer. You know, I, I I saw the trailer and I thought, ooh, this looks really good. But then I got the movie from Netflix back when they sent the movies on disc. And I realized, oh shit, I've already seen this whole movie in the trailer. And they, they spoil the biggest twist of the movie. You know, with the famous line, you know, the call is coming from inside the house or whatever. Like, they spoiled that in the trailer. So... There was no horror, there was no suspense, the main actress is boring and terrible, the movie's terrible, the movie's boring, I, I hate it, I hate everything about it. Okay. 
Number seven is the 355. <laughs> this movie is like one of the biggest jokes in movie history. It's one of those agenda movies you can tell by the poster. And uh, it's so, so bad. It's so bad. It was like a passion project of Jessica Chastain's. She wanted to do this this movie based off of like the 355 was some sort of a, a female spy in the Revolutionary War or some shit. And this movie is just, it is such a bland, boring, uneventful, cliche, bargain bin movie. It's like it's trying to be Mission Impossible with these different actresses who, they're all pretty good actresses. I mean, you got Diane Kruger, she's awesome. You got uh, Penelope Cruz, Lapita Nyong'o, that uh, beautiful Chinese actress, I can't remember her name. She's she, Everything she's in always does terribly for some reason, but this movie is just, it's the worst and it's like, spoiler alert, like, even though this is supposed to be, like, a, a feminist movie, the whole movie is revolved around men. <laughs> like, the whole movie is revolved around Jessica Chastain's boyfriend and how she, he's the bad guy the whole movie. And then also, uh, another one of them gets a boyfriend and then he gets kidnapped and tortured and killed. And, like, the whole plot of this movie revolves around men, ironically. <laughs> Like, even though, like, she thought this would be, like, a feminist movie. Like, everything revolves around men. There's no nudity. There's no sexiness of anything. You know, like in Charlie's Angels. You know, they just don't learn. Like, they made Charlie's Angels in the year 2000. Everyone loved it. I watch it every year, at least once a year. It's that good of a movie. It's sexy. It's funny. It's action-packed. It's amazing. And what do they do now? Oh, they make movies about female empowerment where the whole plot revolves around men and uh, the women aren't portrayed as sexy at all or smart. They're just dumb and they're searching for some sort of a MacGuffin that nobody cares about while they make their little MCU jokes at each other. Like, who gives a shit about that shit? Number six is Swiss Army Man. This movie is one of the dumbest movies I've ever seen. A lot of people really like it because it's weird and it's out there. It is kind of funny at some points, you know, all the stuff that they showed in the trailer, but it's a really, really weird movie in a weird way of where you're waiting for the twist because the whole movie, it's like, who is this, what is this corpse doing uh, that just washed up with this guy or whatever? Like, who, what is, who is this guy? Uh, does the main character know him or anything? And the twist at the end is so disappointing, and it's so depressing, too, at the end. Like, the twist, it, it's really, really kind of, I, I don't like it. it it's, a, it's a very unpleasant experience to watch like it's very very uh depressing and uh, i just i really don't like it number five is glass now i don't i can't hate this movie enough number one they uh embarrassed bruce willis and they misused him before he couldn't even work anymore I mean, his return in Split was so epic. I the Split is probably one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. And they really wasted that idea that they had of, surprise, surprise, Split takes place in the Unbreakable Universe. Wow. Instead, Glass, this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I hate this movie so much, I I will get, like, really, really angry if I keep talking about this movie. Because it, it, it's one of the movies that genuinely makes me angry. For how they misused these characters. For how this movie was such a huge disappointment. 
it's one of those movies where the characters, they're in this abandoned mental hospital with nobody but Crybaby from American Horror Story to be with, to talk to, which I, I guess that wouldn't be so bad. But the story is so dumb. The ending is terrible. It is such a letdown what happens. And what happens, if you guys haven't seen this awful, awful movie, is that all three characters try to escape the asylum. And they almost do, but then they all get killed. And so, uh, for instance, Bruce Willis's character, his weakness is water. And so he gets drowned in a puddle. Yes, that is how bad this movie is. He gets drowned in a fucking puddle. And the twist at the end is that now there's going to be other superheroes out there. It's like, who gives a fuck about other heroes? This isn't what we wanted to see. This isn't what we were promised. It's another one of those things where they wanted to rush it to an end, too. Because M. Night Shyamalan, he wanted to make other shitty original movies. So he's like, I'm just going to rush this uh, universe to an end with this last movie, with Glass. You know, I'm not going to make any more movies. I'm not going to do what was originally supposed to happen, clearly, as teased by Unbreakable. You know, if you go back and you look at Unbreakable, the stuff that they show, they don't do any of that in this movie. It's so disappointing. It's so fucking bad. It, it just... Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about it, because I'm, I'm going to get angry. Okay, number four is Mystery Team. This is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It, it was a rainy day. I didn't have anything to watch or do. I think it was even a school night, which makes it even worse because there's nothing worse than wasting time on a school night and then being like, oh shit, now I have to go to bed and get up to go to prison, a.k.a. school. Uh, but this movie, it was so bad. I, 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 every time that I see this movie, I'm like, oh yeah, I did watch this piece of shit that one time. It's a terrible mystery. Uh, it's not funny at all. It's stupid. The characters suck. The story sucks. Everything about it sucks. The only thing I remember is like the worst part of the movie. And this was the part where I turned it off too. So the characters are like searching around this house and they find this container with what looks like chocolate milk powder and and Donald Glover puts it in a glass and he pours milk and he drinks it and he spits it out. He's like, this tastes terrible. And he realizes that he's drinking someone's ashes. And I thought, oh God, like that, that was such a bad joke to me. It was it was such a bad moment of the movie that I was like I got to turn this off. It's it's that bad. And just excuse me while I <laughs> well I wait, should I? Yeah, I, I no. No, I can't do that. Never mind. See, these last 3 movies are so bad. I don't even know how to rank them. They're that bad. Number 3 is Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink is one of the worst movies to ever happen to women. Because this whole movie was made for Molly Ringworm. You know, John Hughes, he worked with her and he thought, I really like her. She's a great actress. I want to give her something that she's asking for. She wanted John Hughes to make a movie based on the song Pretty in Pink. And he made this movie just for her. And what did she do after making this movie? Not only did she disassociate from him, uh, breaking his heart for the rest of his days, but then after he died, all she does now is talk shit about him and talk shit about all the movies that he made, calling them all problematic and calling him a bad person. And I think that she's probably one of the worst actors in Hollywood for doing that. Because the way that she treats John Hughes for giving her her whole career, I mean, she's she's like, a, she's not even attractive. I mean, she's, she's like a five at best. And he gave her her fucking career. 
And in exchange for that, she does nothing but uh, tear him down and treat him like he did something wrong for making these incredible movies. Minus Pretty in Pink, of course. And that's where we get to Pretty in Pink. This movie is everything wrong with women. And I'm not saying that women are bad or that I hate women. I'm saying that if you want to watch a movie that shows the worst of men, then maybe watch like a prison movie or watch like a bully or watch a Top Gun, you know, the first one, the original. You know, and if you want to see all the bad in women, watch Pretty in Pink. Because the way that she treats Ducky is like the is it's it's like the prime example of everything that's wrong with women, like this character, like Molly Ringworm's character in Pretty in Pink. Her character is like the prime example of like uh, the worst that women have to offer. This this character right here. Is, is probably like the worst I would I'll, I'll say it right now this is the worst female character in film history right here uh, because in real life she was like I'm not going to be with Ducky I'm not going to get with Ducky even though it makes sense story wise uh, the fact that you know she was friend zoning him and she has to choose between him and then the rich douchebag guy that doesn't even have any chemistry with her. And she's like, oh, I'm just going to choose the rich guy. Uh, and also, the studio forced John Hughes to change the ending to Pretty in Pink. He wanted it to end with Ducky and her getting together. The studio forced him to change it. And then at the end, uh, Ducky just randomly gets with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And so, you know what he had to do? That this because this movie was so bad, he had to make an entire new movie called Some Kind of Wonderful, and in that movie, it actually has good female characters that you like, and they show the best in uh, women and uh, females uh, in humanity, and you know that movie actually ends with the good guy getting with the main girl, whereas in this movie. Uh, it ends with the bitch getting with the rich douchebag, and uh, I just I hate I hate this movie so much. I, I wish I could destroy it with fire. I wish I could destroy it with my own two hands. Number two, this movie is so it, I I hate this movie so badly that this movie right here, Adventureland. <sighs> Adventureland, Adventureland, Adventureland. There's a couple of things that this movie has that I hate. It's got Jesse Eisenberg back when he was being put in everything. Whereas nowadays he's just put in, you know, little shitty movies here and there like Manosphere. You know, that anti-men movie that came out last year that nobody even watched. Uh, and then it also has Kristen Stewart back when she was being put in everything. And, of course, they'll still put Kristen Stewart in a lot of things that they shouldn't be putting her in. But this movie right here, it advertised itself like it was going to be a really funny, fun, like, 80s-style comedy at this theme park. Where, like, there's a running joke where they keep, <laughs> they keep on uh, playing the Amadeus song like over and over again like all day long at this at this theme park and you got Bill Hader and uh Ryan Reynolds as the janitor and it's just you think it's going to be really really funny uh, a great comedy with lots of jokes but instead it's one of those bait and switches where you go into the movie and it's like a depressing dark drama about like this college guy or, or I can't remember does he want to go to college I can't remember uh, but he he it's like all about him wanting to be with Kristen Stewart but Kristen Stewart is is so retarded that she is uh, getting with Ryan Reynolds instead uh 
and then Ryan Reynolds, he's married, so it's it's a very depressing downer movie. It's just it's the worst. It's so so bad. I I can't believe that I was suckered into watching this movie after that false advertising that they did. Number one, this movie right here is a movie that was so bad, I didn't even finish it. That's how bad it was. Uh, This movie was a Netflix movie. And, uh, wait, I want to click on it so that I can remember it more because I I didn't even watch it, basically. I watched, like, 20 minutes of it. Well, okay, I should start off with, like, why this movie was supposed to be really good. This movie, after... Jake Gyllenhaal made Nightcrawler. They came he came back with that same director, writer, and also Rene Russo, and he said, like, look, I'm gonna make another movie with him. And everyone thought it was gonna be Nightcrawler Part Two, which Nightcrawler is one of my favorite movies. I watch it all every year. Uh, I think it's a very inspirational movie, even though the main character's evil. Uh <laughs> But this this movie, it is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's all about a painting that kills people, and it's just it's so stupid, it's so bad. I just I hate it so much, and I I couldn't even bear it. I, and I know I know I sound dramatic there, but like I just I couldn't stand this movie. Nothing about it was good. I'm I'm never going to finish it because it should have been Nightcrawler 2. Even and even the even when I found out it wasn't going to be Nightcrawler 2, I still thought, "Hmm, maybe this movie could be good." But then 20 minutes into it, I was like, "No. This movie's going to be terrible and I'm not going to finish it even because I'm not wasting my fucking time with this fucking January movie." So anyways, please like this video and comment and tell me what your least favorite January movies are. Uh, Next up, I will be doing the best movies of January. So goodbye, everybody. See you soon.